Bristol Marine Aquarium. My name is Emily and you're joining us at a really exciting time because today marks the start of the MSC UK Sustainable Seafood Week. So the MSC is the Marine um, Stewardship Council and they are running a campaign called What It Takes where you can learn all about what it takes for these amazing fishermen and women to bring us sustainably sourced food. Um, and here at the Aquarium we've got lots of animals that benefit when we buy sustainable seafood. So we're going to take a look at some of those and then we're going to head upstairs and feed some of our animals as well. Um, so the whole sustainable seafood movement actually started back in the 1990s when a really big cod fishery in Canada collapsed. So too many fish were taken and the fish just disappeared and thousands of people lost their jobs overnight, which is really, really devastating. Um, and everyone kind of decided that we need to make sure that never happens again. Um, and so the Marine Stewardship Council was set up to help make sure that we're fishing sustainably. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about what that means. Um, but in this tank that you can see in front of us, um, we've got lots of amazing local animals that we get in the UK. And there are lots that you guys might recognize as well. So we've got lots of food that you might have caught yourself. Um, and we've also got lots of food that you might have seen at the fish and chip shop, things like that. Um, and as always with our live videos, if you have any comments or questions, please just pop them in the comment section um, and we'll answer as many as we can. So there's a fish in here that people often recognize. Um, there is one just, just up there, there we go. So it's got the three fins on its back. Um, now this is called a pollock. And if you've ever eaten fish fingers, you've probably had one of these um, because they're usually um, one of the fish that goes into fish fingers. So that's what it looks like. So they spend their time swimming around in the middle of the water there. Um, but if we actually take a look on the sea floor, um, if we have a look down, there's quite a lot that goes on on the sea floor here. So we'll just move over into the middle of the exhibit. So here in the middle, you can see lots of animals laying on the floor. We've got the ones that are really flat with the long, thin tails. Those are a type of ray. But actually, just between those two rays, just where that shark is swimming, there's a really big flatfish. So we actually eat lots of different types of flatfish as well, like um, place and turbot and sole. Um, so lots of the animals that live on the sea floor, we rely on as well. Um, but we catch them in very different ways. So I mentioned earlier that the cod fishery that collapsed, it was because too many were taken. So one aspect of sustainable seafood um, is just making sure that we're not taking too many. But another thing that the Marine Stewardship Council have a look at when they're assessing fisheries is the environmental impact. So if we're taking animals that live near the sea floor, are we damaging aspects of the sea floor? Are we damaging different habitats? There's another pollock. Oh, and a lovely sea bass. Just come in to say hello. So if you guys have ever been snorkeling or anything like that, um, lots of these guys are the ones that you might have seen as well. So you might recognize lots of them, not just from the fish and chip shop, um, but from when you've been out and about as well. So these are our very grumpy looking stone bass. Lots of people say they look like their grandparents, very old grumpy men. Um, but I think they look really cute. I love them. So stone bass as well, different types of bass. And um, they're ones that are quite commonly caught, um, either just by the kind of um, local fishermen that go out recreationally, um, but also a bit more commercially as well. <laughs> they're also very curious animals. with fishermen and with scientists to basically develop the most sustainable ways to fish. So taking into account how many fish we're taking um, and how we're taking them as well. So if we are damaging the environment and things like that. 
Um, and they'll do that assessment, and if they think those fishermen and that fishery is sustainable, they will give it a certificate and they will certify it. And it means that they can put a special logo on their food so that we, as the consumer, know which food is sustainable. Um, so we can focus on those and we can buy those and we can support those fishermen. And because they really, really care about the ocean and they really, really want to protect it um, and to look after the animals. Um, so we talked about earlier lots of animals um, or the habitat that we have to look after as well. So as well as not taking too many, we have to look after the habitat. So this is something called seagrass and there are lots of little animals hiding amongst it. So lots of cool little stuff. You can see very well camouflaged fish down here as well. So by looking after the habitat, so when we buy seafood that has been caught sustainably, as well as looking after the animals that are being caught, we're also looking after the habitats and the animals that live in them. So things like seagrass and lots of types of coral as well, which is really, really cool. So it also actually helps us as people because seagrass, for example, um, it takes in 35 times more carbon than a similar sized patch of rainforest. So it really, really helps us to tackle climate change um, and make sure that our atmosphere is nice and healthy so that we can be nice and healthy ourselves as humans. So we're actually helping ourselves as well by looking after the ocean um, and buying sustainable seafood. Um, and if we also just take a little look um, behind us over here, so there's that beautiful tank we were just looking at, and hanging just above it, um, are some really amazing larger animals. So we've got um, orcas over here, we've got a humpback whale, so this is the size of a baby, an adult wouldn't fit in the room unfortunately. Um, we've also got a leatherback turtle and we've got some common dolphins. Now believe it or not, we actually get every single one of these animals here in the UK. So all of these animals at some point come to the UK and they all benefit from our sustainable seafood fisheries as well. Um, but they benefit in a slightly different way because we're not actually catching these guys, of course. These aren't the ones that we want to eat um, and they don't really spend much time at the bottom where they might need those particular habitats. Um, but they actually often end up as something called bycatch. So that is when we accidentally catch something that we weren't supposed to catch. Um, and there are ways that we can help prevent that from happening. So the MSC, the Marine Stewardship Council, one of the things they look at is how much bycatch um, a fishery produces. So how many animals are they catching accidentally? And if they're catching a lot, they won't give the certificate unless that fishery reduces it. So there was um, a haddock fishery in Scotland and they were trying to catch haddock, but they kept accidentally catching cod as well. And the MSC said to them, if you want to keep your sustainable certificate, you need to reduce your cod bycatch. So they did. So they changed how they were fishing. They started fishing at different times of year when there were less cod around, and they changed their equipment as well. So they were using equipment that targeted haddock um, but didn't catch cod and they actually reduced their bycatch by 60% which is amazing so by us buying the sustainable seafood it makes the fishermen want to have sustainable products even more so they'll put in all of the extra effort that it takes to get that certificate and um, to keep going so it really really benefits all of us when we can do that so it's really, really cool So we're just going to head up around the corner to one of our behind the scenes areas um, where we are going to look at some very, very cute little baby fish um, and we're going to give them a little bit of a feed as well because it is supper time here at the aquarium so it's the last feed of the day that's taking place for lots of our animals. So this actually has um, plankton in it. So a type of plankton called Artemia. So if you've ever had sea monkeys as a child, that is what this is. So you can see all of those little teeny tiny pink things swimming around. 
that is the type of plankton. So that is what lots of our smaller animals get fed. So our little babies, so we're gonna go, I'm gonna go and feed these guys. So the room that we're in now is not a room that our visitors normally get to see. So you've got a bit of a treat at the moment. Um, this is where lots of our baby animals are kept and these are baby 15 spine sticklebacks and they are adorable. Um, so they're actually related to seahorses and pipefish and all of those amazing creatures that also um, really rely on those important habitats that we protect by choosing sustainable seafood. Look at their little faces, aren't they cute? Cool, so I'm just going to pour some of this food in for them. I know it's coming. So they are very, very sweet. Um, and we actually have other baby animals here at the aquarium. We have some that are on display as well. So we've got baby sharks. Um, baby rays, baby flatfish. So if you're in the area and you want to come and check those out, um, then please do come and visit us. You can head to our website to book your tickets to do that. Um, and hopefully when these guys are a little bit bigger, a little bit braver, and we know that they're growing well, um, you might see them as well out on display. They are very, very sweet. And they look a little bit unusual as well. Um, and I'm just going to show this tank here to you. So in this tank, we've got something that you might recognize, but you might not as well. So this is something that we get here in the UK as well, um, and it is actually a type of coral. So we get coral here in the UK. This is a pink sea fan, and you can see it's this beautiful pink color, which is how it got its name. And it is a type of coral, just like those tropical corals. We get corals here as well. Um, and they're another thing that's protected by choosing sustainable seafood. So it's another habitat, just like the seagrass we talked about earlier, um, that's protected by choosing to buy seafood from fisheries that have got that food sustainably. So sometimes people say, um, isn't it better to just not eat seafood? Well, actually it's not because three billion people around the world rely on seafood as one of their primary sources of protein. So people need to eat seafood. There's a really big demand for it. And lots of people rely on the ocean and seafood um, for their income um, and their livelihoods. And so in order to support those and to support the people that need to eat seafood, we need to make sure that we're supporting the sustainable fisheries. So by supporting sustainable fisheries and buying sustainable seafood, we can increase the demand for sustainable fisheries so they will increase and increase and unsustainable fishing will gradually reduce um, and then hopefully one day they'll all be sustainable and that's what we can always rely on so we can have nice healthy oceans. So we're gonna pop outside now um, and we're gonna feed some of our other fish that are out on display. Slightly different what we've done. I'll explain what it is when we get outside. It's a little bit quieter. So this is our Plymouth Sound exhibit, which is the first that you see if you come and visit us here at the aquarium. Um, so we're going to head over to this really lovely tank along the wall here with some more fish that a lot of you might recognise. So we've got another flatfish just down here. So again, a common one um, from the fish and chip shops on your fish and chip Friday, you might have flatfish. And if you've ever been fishing yourself locally, um, then the mullet that are just swimming past, you've probably caught those. Um, you might have even seen them if you walk around on the harbour um, and you see a bit of commotion near the surface of the water. It's usually mullet, they're quite greedy, a bit cheeky, and they like to hang out near the surface a lot of the time. Um, and they're actually the ones that we are gonna feed right now. So we haven't got the same food for them that you might have seen before. So we've actually um, got this here. So it's called a flake feed. Um, and it's a little bit like when you feed your fish at home pellets. 
So it's basically full of nutrients and minerals um, because normally we have to feed our fish frozen food and when you freeze food, you can lose some of those nutrients inside. But we want our fish to get all the nutrients they need. So we give them this special flake that's just kind of really concentrated and full of all that good stuff. Um, so we're going to give that to them now. We have to mix it in with water. So I hope they don't come over and steal it while we're mixing. So we'll just give it a good mix around, maybe a little bit more water. So in the UK, we've actually got lots and lots of different fish and we've seen lots of different ones already. We've seen flat ones, the really, really cute sticklebacks, um, all sorts of different ones. And actually in the whole ocean, the ocean contains 80% of all life on earth. So 80%, that's crazy. So we really need to make sure that we look after it and protect it. Let's see if the mullet are gonna come over wherever they've gone. Okay. Oh, they're thinking about it. So sometimes it takes these guys a little bit of time to kind of wake up and realize what's going on. But once they do, they're quite greedy and they just swim along and will kind of suck in as much as they can. So I said that the ocean contains 80% of all life on earth, but unfortunately a third of all fish stocks in the whole ocean have been overfished already. So it's really, really important for us to try and reverse that and to stop taking too many fish and in order to do that we need to really really support the amazing fishermen and women that are out there doing their bit and trying to be as sustainable as possible because they really really care about the ocean it's their livelihood um, many of them have kind of grown up from families that have been fishing for generations and it's just really really at the heart of who they are and we need to really encourage that and support them because what they do is amazing um, and we do need seafood. We need to have fish on our plates and in our ocean. Um, and we can help to make sure that that happens. We can do that um, by looking out for this very special logo on food. So this little blue fish, um, this is the label, it's called an eco label. And it's the label that food gets if it's come from a fishery that's been certified as sustainable. So the MSC, the Marine Stewardship Council, when they work alongside those fishermen and they work out, um, they make sure they're not taking too many fish, they're not damaging the environment, um, they're not catching too many extra fish, there's not much bycatch, and they're just generally managing their fisheries effectively and following all of the, the kind of laws and rules they then get given this logo and they can put this logo on any products that come from their food. And that then gives us the consumer, so when we go shopping and we buy all of our food, it gives us the power to choose food with this logo on it. And if we do that, we support those fishermen and we support those fisheries and we help to make sure that they can continue doing that in the future so that we can have lots of lovely fish in our oceans and a lovely, healthy ocean. Because a healthy ocean is a healthy planet. The ocean is the lungs of our planet um, and we really do need it to survive. Um, and those sustainable fishermen are really, really um, doing their best to help make sure that that happens. So we need to support them. So whenever you go to the fish and chip shop, look for this logo. Whenever you're at the supermarket, have a little look for this on the back of the products. There are around 1,500 products in the UK that have this logo on. So there's lots and lots to choose from. It's actually really, really easy. Um, for us to find this logo. So we need to make sure that that's what we're looking out for. There is more that you guys can do though. So if you follow the What It Takes campaign from the MSC UK, um, you can learn a bit more about the work that the fisheries do, a bit more about the MSC and just what it takes 
to get us this sustainable seafood and help protect our ocean. They also have some very cool cooking classes coming up this week. So every night this week from today onwards, um, from 6 p.m., you can join in with some online sustainable seafood cooking classes, which is, uh, sounds like a lot of fun. So I think that's on Instagram. But if you head to their website, all of the details are there. And of course, if you want to see all of these amazing animals and learn even more about what it takes to be sustainable or what it means to be sustainable and the animals that will benefit, um, then please do come and visit us here at the National Marine Aquarium in Plymouth. You can head to our website to book your tickets. Um, but most importantly, when you are at home in your daily lives, making all of those decisions about what to do, where to go, how to do it, please remember to think ocean and help us to protect it.